Here's another example from section 1.2, problem number 13. We want to find the general solution of a separable differential equation. We're going to see that it's not entirely simple when you want to find the general solution and convert to an explicit solution. You still have choices to make and you need initial conditions or data to make those choices. Let's show you two approaches here. First you separate the equation, collect the y's on one side, the t's on the other. This equation was autonomous, so it's automatically separable. Now you can follow one of two paths. You can either integrate on the left using u substitution. This has the advantage of allowing you to isolate the y a little more visually or you can integrate one term at a time is on the right. It's a shorter, simpler looking solution, but you have two occurrences of y. The two solutions that you have here are implicit general solutions. They can both be solved for y in a way. On the left hand side, we can take the square root of both sides. And the square root of a perfect square introduces the absolute value. And the absolute value introduces a choice of plus or minus. So yes, we're going to solve for y on the left hand side. But we can't get away from introducing this plus or minus. And we won't be able to resolve the plus or minus unless we have an initial condition to help us. y is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 4t plus c all divided by 2. The other implicit general solution we can also solve for y if we think of it as a quadratic equation with y as the variable. And the a is 1, the coefficient of y squared. The b is 1, the coefficient of y. And the c is negative quantity t plus c. If you insert those a, b, and c into the quadratic formula, you get the same solution for y as you did on the left. Notice how you had to gather the constants under the square root sign into a new constant. So these two solutions are quite explicit. Both of them introduced a plus minus sign. But they're both explicit in this sense that, you know, they're formulas for y. And if we had an initial condition, we could easily make the choice of plus or minus.